What's up everyone, welcome back to Saint Seiya Awakening. Today we're kicking off our S Saint review series and we're starting with none other than Mr. Pisces Aphrodite. Now this guy was about tied with Death Mask as far as suggestions for the first Saint to review, but I think he's a little bit more interesting and fun to play with. We're going to be looking at everything from his skills, team compositions, the best Cosmo to equip on him, his different uses, his weaknesses, pretty much the whole deal. Let's start off with his skills. On the first one, we have the Royal Demon Rose, which deals 40% physical damage to one enemy with a 90% chance to inflict poison. And that poison stacks up to five times. That is going to decrease the target's damage by three, six, nine, 12, 15% for the next two rounds. The effect will be restarted if the target is poisoned again within the duration. Now, unlike in many other games, poison in this game does not mean damage over time. Here, it's simply a reduction on damage. So basically their attack or Cosmo attack power. Doesn't seem like much at first glance, it's only 40% physical damage, not a great multiplier, but things get interesting as we go on. On the second skill, we have Piranha Rose, which attacks the enemy three times, 5% physical damage each time. Each attack has a 30% plus status hit chance to decrease the target's defense by 60%. Now, 60% defense decrease is no joke. That's a lot of extra damage that you're gonna be doing in the next round. It's also a fairly high proc rate at 30%. If you manage to get some status hit in there with some Cosmo, that could go up to 50 or 60. And because you attack three times, there's a pretty good chance that you're gonna land that defense break. And that's 60% damage increase next turn. In number three, we have the Bloody Rose, which is a little bit confusing the first time you read it, but once you understand it, it actually makes a lot of sense. So the description says, plunges the Bloody Rose into the heart of one enemy, stealing HP equal to 70, 140, 210 damage at the beginning of the target's next three action rounds. If the target already has the Royal Demon and Piranha Roses, the Bloody Rose directly steals HP equal to 220% damage. Now, what the heck does this all mean? When you shoot this Rose at somebody, you're not gonna be doing any damage. You're simply placing a sort of debuff on the enemy. The next time that enemy moves, the Rose is going to deal damage and you're going to absorb 70% of that damage dealt on the first round. On the second round, you're going to absorb 140% of the damage dealt and on the third one, it goes up to 210%. Now, all of these can go way up with skill ups. So the, the total HP absorption is insane after a few rounds, especially if you can land this on a couple of people. How do you land it on a couple of people? Because of his passive. So this is what makes uh, Pisces such an interesting unit and it makes his mechanics, because they are unique in the game, it makes his mechanics really, really fun. His passive, Warrior of Beauty, reads, in the current round, if Pisces Aphrodite is the last one to make a move on your side, he will cast one rose on a random enemy after his attack for every one extra energy. It prioritizes casting Royal Demon Rose or Piranha Rose and then randomly cast Bloody Rose if the target already has the two rows. Now again, that's a lot of text, but to some it up what he does is he's going to attack multiple times if there's energy left at the end of your turn if it gets to the end of the turn he's the last one to move and there's five energy left he's going to attack five times now like the skill says it prioritizes the use of the first two roses but it also has a chance to proc the third rose if the first two roses are already present on the same enemy which means you could get free casts of this otherwise four energy cost skill for free and that is insane if you manage to land a couple of these on just a couple of enemies the hp absorption is going to be so high that unless the energy has a single target nuke like sagittarius or something there's no way they're going to slowly kill pisces because he will be healing for a lot more than the enemy can deal and this is where we can talk about his uses. Because he does require some time in order to build up energy and release more attacks on the same turn, he is a long-term unit. You're not gonna go into a battle and one-shot something with Pisces the way that you could with other saints in the game. But he is the master of the combat. If you leave this guy for last and he has all the energy at his disposal, unless you can one-shot him, there is no way that you're going to kill him. He will keep healing and healing and defense breaking and nuking and flowering up your, your units until you're all dead. So he's great for long-term PvP battles where you don't have to win first round. He's also great for Legion boss because of his defense break on skill two. This 60% is a lot. He pairs really well with low energy cost teams such as Luna and Milo with some healers in there and a little bit of protection. You can do an awful lot of damage with not a lot of energy spent. Those are really his main uses. In PvE, you're gonna wanna use him in Legion boss and in PvP, you're gonna wanna surround him with a supporting team that can make him shine, survive a little longer until you have enough energy and then absolutely annihilate everything. Now, what are those teams that you're going to want to bring with him? Ideally, you're going to have a healer to help keep him alive for the first couple of turns before you can start stealing HP. You're going to have some protection because we're going to talk about his weak points in a little bit. 
So units such as Juna, Mu, Saori, anybody that can keep him from dying turn one is a great asset and a good combo for him. Any buffers you can bring to increase his damage will also go a long way, such as data loss or Nachi. You guys know I love Nachi. I gotta mention Nachi at least once. Kiki, obviously, for extra energy. The more energy Pisces has at the end of the turn, the more damage and shenanigans he's gonna do. As far as which skills to use on him, you're going to want to prioritize skill 2, obviously for the defense break. You can throw in some skills 1 too if you want to lower the damage that the enemy is doing. And then just wait for the energy to build up and when he starts proccing like crazy, you're going to get to cast this one for free. So really just start using these two at zero energy cost and you'll do great. If you happen to pull some dupes and you're wondering which skill you should upgrade, most definitely upgrade skill 3. Because this is his bread and butter. This is what makes him amazing. The ability to self-sustain and pretty much solo an entire team if they can't one-shot. The way that you improve the odds of that happening is by leveling up skill 3, getting more lifesteal every turn and staying alive. Now, let's talk Cosmo. So the game has a pretty cool feature in that it has a guide built in that you can check if you're not sure about which Cosmo to equip on your Saint. That doesn't mean that this guide is 100% fail-proof. As you will see, the recommendation for Aphrodite, I don't actually agree with. I think there is a better setup for him. So what does Aphrodite need? He needs to stay alive, he needs to deal a lot of damage, and he needs to land his debuffs, especially the defense ring. So the attributes that you're going to be looking for him are his physical attack, HP for survivability, and some status hit in there so you can land those debuffs. Now for Solar Cosmo, the game recommends Peace Stone and Fire Drop, and I actually think Fire Drop makes more sense. A, because it improves your survivability with the HP boost, and it also has some more P-crit effect. You lose a little bit of defense and some attack, but I don't think that's too major. At the end of the day, he's going to be doing incredible damage regardless of how much attack he has. I went with P-Stone simply because I didn't really have a lot of good fire drops. Most of my best fire drops went to Doko and to Sagittarius, so he's kind of like on third tier runes. I happen to have some good P-Stone, so that's what I put on him. But I do recommend going with fire drop first. For Lunar, the game recommends Tenacity, but here's where we disagree. I think Seiya, with the status hit boost, is great for Pisces because it improves his attack break on the first skill, and it improves the odds of landing that defense break on the second skill. That's major. You want to land it. If you use the skill, you want to land that defense break. Tenacity gives you a little bit more physical defense. The main boost of the 3 piece set is still HP 10%, so you're sacrificing a little bit of defense to get that status hit and land the debuffs. For Star, there's no question. You go with Staunch, you go with the pre-crit level. The more often you can crit, pre-crit level is kind of like crit rate, is how often you crit the enemy. The more often you crit, the more damage you do, the more HP you steal, the longer you stay alive and that's how you win battles. Now Legendary is where it gets fun because he's a very versatile unit and he can actually benefit for quite a few sets. So I'm gonna give you what I think is my number one choice and then I'll give you a few other options. Maybe it turns out you have a better one under those other options and you don't necessarily have the one that's best. It will still work. Number one choice in my opinion and I'm sure there's some people that are gonna disagree but number one has to be Kingfisher. Because he attacks so many times this 70% chance to deal true damage is likely to happen on at least two or three of the targets that you hit. You're gonna get this thing to proc and your damage is gonna go through the roof. Now when you have a unit that only attacks once, if you miss this then it's kind of a problem. But because he's gonna be proc proc procking, there's a very good chance that you proc this additional damage and it can help you kill the enemy quicker. Number two would be Daffodil because there is a chance that your Pisces is gonna be targeted and your enemy is gonna be trying to kill it. There's a very good chance that it's gonna lose HP in between rounds. That means when it comes time for his round, he's gonna be able to take full advantage of the HP lost and transform that into physical attack. Now, it works great for him because he is a physical attacker. Daffodil is useless for Cosmo attackers. Number three, and the other one that the game recommends, is Silver Dragon, which has a 25% chance to deal additional damage based on the target's HP. Now, this sounds great for things like Legion Boss or some place where the enemy has a huge HP pool, but in PvP is really not that useful and the 25% chance is much much lower than the benefit you can get from the 70% in uh, Kingfisher. It's still not a bad option, it's what the game recommends, but I really prefer Kingfisher over this one. And maybe even Daffodil. Now the fourth one is Blood Elf, one of the newer Cosmos. What this one does is that it decreases the defense and Cosmo defense of the enemy by 10%. Now unfortunately this does not stack, because if it's stacked in the same round, and you shot somebody six times and you decrease 60% defense on top of the 60% defense you already decreased, that's more defense that you can even decrease. It would be insane. But we tested it, it does not stack, it's one time per round and only a 10% decrease. That's pretty much it for Cosmo. This is my current build. I have mine on P-Stone, Staunch, Seiya, and Kingfisher. 
The stats on him at 5 stars are not too shabby. I'm considering 6 starring him right now. He's got a lot of HP, so he stays alive for a long time. He's got very decent P attack. I got some extra status hit there to ensure those debuffs land. And his P crit level is not bad, even without the Cosmo maxed and without the Cosmo refined at all. I just equipped it, power it up. I have not spent the time refining it yet. So all of this has great room for improvement. Now, what are Aphrodite's weaknesses? Undoubtedly, it has to be the one shot. Okay, when you get to late game and if your enemy gets stuck trying to kill you with some AoE damage dealer, Pisces is never gonna die. He will eventually win the battle alone. But if you get unlucky enough to face a Sagittarius or a Shion or maybe even a Doko that can nuke you turn one or turn two, then Aphrodite is completely useless because he's not gonna do anything for those first few turns. That's why we mentioned in the teams to bring some protection. Juna can mitigate the one-shot damage, uh, Saori can protect him from instant death, and Mu can give him a little bit more survivability. Xion's shield is not too bad either, but he kind of tends to move last, so your enemy will already have moved, and if you had a Sagittarius in there, then Pisces is most likely dead. Next, let's take a look at Pisces in action. Now, mine is not really quite ready to go out there yet, but here under Sacred Duel, we can come to a trial section when you can bring any team and kind of see how they would work and test their skills. Now, because this is a Pisces showcase, everybody else here is just for decoration. The guys we care about are Kiki for extra energy and Nachi for the boost. We're going to start off by creating some additional energy. My Nachi also has the Marsh Fairy, which gives you one extra energy every turn. I'm gonna give the boost to Pisces, even though here at the start of the battle we're not gonna see anything too crazy. Alright, we can just take a look at how his skills work. So, I'm gonna click this one, but because there's four energy left, I'm actually gonna attack a total of four times. So we landed the defense break on our original target, and we also procced it on the first enemy here on the left. So you can kind of already see where we're going, right? You're gonna get a lot of debuffs, a lot of attacks, and things are gonna get harder and harder as we go. He's gonna be doing a ton of damage, he's gonna start absorbing HP. There's one more defense break, now we did I think like 6 attacks. We have defense break on almost the entire enemy line. Now unfortunately it's only for 2 turns. So the guys that we got on the first one already cleared it. I'm gonna slow it down on this one because I think we're ready to start seeing some free skill 3 procs. Keep an eye on Pisces and when you see a big green number pop up, that is the energy that he's absorbing because of the attack. So I'm still gonna click skill 2 and we'll see what happens. Defense break. There's 26,000 heal, 26,000 heal, because he's landing that third rose on enemies that already have the other two debuffs. And you know they have the two debuffs because they have the poison and they have the defense rate. So anybody that he touches, right, on that last move, anybody that he touches that already has the two debuffs, he's gonna heal for 220% something attack damage or something ridiculous like that. And now you can see how if you get stuck fighting this guy, he's the last one left and you cannot kill him, no matter how long it takes and how many healers you have, he will eventually end up killing you because you simply cannot take him down. Here we go again. 33k on this one, almost 34,000, and he proc to what, 3 or 4 times? It's, it's insane levels of damage, this guy is so much fun, I cannot wait to start using him. Okay, I think that's quite enough torture for these poor soldiers, we're gonna cut it here, but I hope this gives you an idea of how his skills work, and what makes him good, and how to use him. Let's say goodbye with a big one. 40, 47k, holy crap! That's gonna be it for today guys, I hope that helps you out. Pisces is one of the most confusing characters, but once you understand his mechanics and start using him, he can be really powerful and really fun. To summarize it, build him tanky, bring some protection so that he can't be one shot, and then just hang around for a little bit and watch him do crazy stuff as the battle goes on. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, please remember to hit like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next S-Saint review, probably Death Mask. Have a great rest of the day, bye!